Yo guys, what is up, what is up, Jerome here, and today we are answering your 10 biggest, most burning questions. I want to answer all the ones you've been putting on YouTube, on Reddit, on the forums as well. You know, the basic ones, right? Things like, will Dragon Soul last three years instead of one year? Things like, will we get the Raid Finder at launch? Or will that come out later on? So I really wanted to answer all your biggest questions, so let's get right to it. Alright, so the 10th biggest burning question about Kata is how long it'll actually be. Blizzard did promise accelerated content cadence for Kata, whatever that exactly means. It is really notable though, because none of the other initial press releases mentioned a faster content rollout. I mean, for Wrath, for TBC, it was just never mentioned. We do historically know that Classic was 18% faster than it used to be in Vanilla, and TBC was 27% faster, which is way faster. And then, just, you know, prediction-wise, it looks like Wrath Classic will be about 20% faster than the original release. We have to remember, though, that none of these expansions were pushing that faster cadence as a major selling point. It does seem pretty logical to expect that the Kata 658-day expansion will be 25-30% to 30 faster. But, you know, I'm just making that number up. It could be way more than that. I guess the question is, would you play a one-year Kata expansion to rush into Mists of Pandaria as fast as humanly possible? I mean, as fast as pandily possible. Do let me know in the comments, I would be interested. The number ninth biggest question is, if things get faster, how do the raids actually change? Another thing on timelines, I mean, I'm not just trying to talk timelines the whole video, but originally we had four major content portions for Kata. We had our grand opening on December 7th, 2010. Then a couple months later, we had the ZG patch on April 26th. That was followed up by the Firelands patch on June 28th, and then Dragon's Duel on November 29th. Blizzard already has said the 4.1 ZG patch won't even be a major content phase. It'll be a sort of weird half phase in between the launch and Firelands, and maybe even shorter than the original 63-day patch. As for Firelands, really nothing's been said, since everybody agrees it's pretty awesome. Dragon Soul lovers, though, not so fast, because Agren did mention on a podcast that one of the biggest complaints about Kata was the Dragon Soul duration. To paraphrase what he said in the super long interview, basically you could only kill Deathwing so many times. It's extremely safe to say that the 301 day patch will be cut down by at least a few months. At number 8, another major question everybody has is whether we'll get Raid Finder at launch. Raid Finder is unbelievably controversial. Just a quick recap, Raid Finder is super similar to RDF, you just queue up and get put into a raid. Then you're given this sort of easier raid, it's sort of not really on rails, but you know, lower difficulty. Although the raid's easy, I mean, the gear was actually really high though. You would get way better gear than you would do in a heroic, and you also get tier gear as well. One controversial complaint a lot of people had that, you know, I'm not going to say lazy, but like a low effort player could just super easily complete the raid and then get geared up. Then there was this other toxic part of it as well. Basically, if you kicked people out of the group, your guild could get more tier pieces for themselves. Blizzard has said they're not really sure if they're going to even put Raid Finder in at launch. My take is that they're probably not going to put it in, because it was just in for Dragon Soul back in the day. It would actually take more work to get the old raids working, so it would just be too much money. At number 7, one of the burning questions a lot of people have is whether they'll be changing the dungeons. Dungeon difficulty just comes up time and time again when we talk about Cataclysm. Cataclysm had those famously difficult heroics at launch that kind of turned a lot of people off. Surprisingly, Blizzard kind of thinks these are great. I mean, they really like the hard difficulty. According to one of their many roundtable interviews, they have said that they're going to remain unchanged. However, we will be going back to get new difficulty modes after launch, which will be even harder. That heavily implies that Titan Rune is coming back, you know, like the Titan Rune Gamma, the Alpha, the Beta. If it's anything like it was back in Wrath, we'll be getting our first version for Firelands. Then we'll be getting a new version for Dragon Soul with new catch-up gear, and, you know, hopefully the web wrap mechanic will come back, because everybody loves that. At number 6, a really popular question is whether there'll be Wrath Era servers. There are actually two questions to answer here that I keep seeing everybody talking about. The first is whether your character will automatically get ported to Kata. The second is whether we'll get, you know, the sort of classic Era servers, but for Wrath. The reason these questions keep coming up is that a lot of players consider Wrath to be the final step in their classic journey. They want to be able to clear the Lich King over and over and over and over again without being forced into Kata. Bad news though, Blizzard doesn't really want to spend the money on the server, so they're probably not going to do it. Though this is definitely something that could be swayed if enough people are interested. On the WoW forums as we speak, there's currently a petition to try to get a Wrath Era server created. If that's something you really want, I put the petition below the video so you can sign it. 
At number five, one of the big burning questions is how the loot will change. One of the bigger complaints in Kata is that the 25-man raids were kind of pushed aside, you know, in favor of the much easier to make 10-mans. Sure, a lot of people do like 10-man raids, but to me, it doesn't really recreate that epic night with the boys that a lot of us are looking for. To try to keep that epic feeling of boys' night alive, Blizzard's going to be adding in more drops for 25-mans. Very similar to how Naxxramas was in Classic Wrath, giving more gear in 25s. The gear will be exactly the same though, so 10-mans will be prioritized by most players. The number quattro biggest question is how will the balancing change? Everybody always talks about Kata Classic and balancing together. The things like the linear skill trees were always a pretty big complaint. They definitely did take away player choice, and they make everybody do the same freaking things. Part of the reason for that is that all the classes kind of had to be given the same tools to make the 10-mans work. I mean, you don't want to have to bring a shaman to every single 10-man, right? The result of that, though, was that everything was homogenized, and it kind of took away class identity. According to a recent interview, though, Blizzard has no plans to change class balancing. In fact, they actually seem pretty happy with how everything turns out in the Dragon Soul patch. That being said, since the recent Wrath Tinkering was a pretty big success, we'll probably get some changes on a case-by-case -case basis. The number three burning question is, what will the guild changes be? In an interview with Crix, Agrenda and Nora hyped up some big changes to the guild systems like perks. As a refresher in Kata, your guild basically levels up by doing PvE, raiding, RBGs, guild challenges, stuff like that. The more players in your guild, the more people get XP for you, which means you unlock the perks faster. Then your guild unlocks things like the Mass Resurrection spell, as well as faster honor point gains, reduced prices from vendors, I mean, the list goes on and on. Naturally, this does lead to a lot of new players in the game being spammed to join these giant mega guilds with hundreds of players. Blizzard may have gotten spammed a lot back in the day, because they really want to change this to encourage mom and pop guilds. My preferred option would just be to lower the amount of XP your guild can get per day, you know, just like lowering the cap. That way you'd be able to hit the caps with way less players. If getting a bunch of perks for simply being part of a community sounds like a pretty good deal to you, definitely subscribe. It's like being in a WoW guild, except you're on YouTube and you don't have to do 10 hours of Heroic Lich King every single week. The number two biggest burning question is what will the leveling changes be? We all know in Kata the world gets completely exploded and the leveling starts to feel a lot more like retail. Fast, easy, anytime you get bored you just go into RDF and you just spam dungeons. Well, I have to say the whole 1 to 80 experience is going to be way faster in Kata according to Blizzard interviews. I'd wager a bet this includes joyous journeys. Unless you honestly think they're going to go back and tweak the XP values for every single mob in the game. Alright, the number one burning question, nobody actually asked this, but I'm asking it, is will there be a Catafresh server? Not a single one of the four interviews I read mentioned anything about a Catafresh server. But come on guys, come on Wowhead, come on Icy Veins, you know everybody would go crazy for fresh servers and Cata actually has a compelling reason to get them. Most of us will just barely even be experiencing the new open world features since we already have level 80 characters. A fresh Kata server really gives us the ability to go out and quest and enjoy the open world for the first time. Speaking of new things, you're about to be getting a new raid buff for the first time in a few weeks. It's going to change your raid comps, your healer core, probably even your tanks. So definitely check out this video so you can get as informed as possible.